It is a very flat, calm day out here. I spent the first two hours. Whoa. Right as I say that, you get the boat weight coming through, but I'm hooked up. I felt that was just one hand. Anyway, we spent a couple of hours actually on the far side over there with zero luck. It's really cold out today. And it dawned on me that the channel side the channel side has a lot more mud being washed out from the river, and mud retains heat much better than sand. So I came over here, cast out, and within a few seconds, literally a few seconds, we had a bite, and we've got fish number two. Fish number one is currently serving as cut bait over on the, the longer surf rod that I have. And this is fish number two. There we go. Took that deep, goodness. Both whiting, really lovely fish. It's kind of hard to see the gorgeous patterns on the sky because of the angle of the sun, but he's gonna be bait. So dispatch him quickly. There we go. Put him in the bait bag. Ideally speaking, this colder weather is really good for uh, sand trout, spotted trout, red drum, and flounder, which trout flounder and red drum are kind of like, they're considered the grand slam of Gulf Coast fishing. And a lot of them get, they just get really active this time of year. Uh, they start breeding, they start feeding in larger shoals, they just become the fish to catch. But I'm actually kind of shocked by the activity of the whiting. Throw that back out, right there. I gotta be careful, this knife is, I like this knife, it's a very good knife but I don't want it to slide down these rocks. I'd be very upset if I lost it. Hooked up again. Another one, another whiting. Oh, splashing all the water back in my face. It only took a few seconds. These guys are just all over the place. That's the good thing about fishing for whiting and croaker is that you don't have to use a super small hook like you would if you're fishing for like pinfish or something fish you got to use a microscopic hook this fish right here this tiny little guy took on that hook right there you can see how big it is in relationship to the fish he took it no problem at all and yes I'm gonna use this one for bait as well even if I don't end up using all this bait today it goes in the freezer we come back out we have bait and we can start fishing for uh, the larger species right away none of this goes to waste None of it whatsoever goes to waste. All right, let's get another piece of shrimp. This is what I'm using, by the way. A little three-way swivel there. And I've got a quick link attached to the mono there, just in case if I want to put a you know a lure on, I can. And then I've just got, I was a little short on lead this morning, so I've got two drop shot weights tied together. And then on this end, I've got, I don't know what size hook that is, very small gamakatsu hook. There we go, 20 pound monofilament tied to about 30 pound braid with an FG knot. I don't know if you can even see that, but that is an FG knot. Works quite nicely. Let's get this back out. There we go. We cast a little bit closer to that tower than I have have been. I've been just casting straight out and catching fish. Now I'm going to see if we can catch the fish closer to the tower. Just wait for a second. The breeze is starting to pick up, so I'm sure you can hear that on the camera. For things like every time I set the camera out and I start filming like conditions are just right and as soon as we get going oh here's the wind oh here's the rain but anyway nothing yet nothing yet on the cut bait that rod's just still sitting there make sure we're tight to the tight to the bait tight to the lead i feel the smallest little hit oh there's one Something just popped it real hard. There, oh, he's back. He's back there. Yes. He <laughs> Might have missed that one. Might have missed that one. Yeah, he missed it, but he was there. There, look at that. He took my bait. Took my bait. Another fish on. This one's putting up a better fight. Oh yeah. What do we got? Ah, trout, mission accomplished. Well, 
we're gonna stay here. We're not leaving after catching just one trout, but that is a, a nice fish. Nice fish. Just gotta be careful here. I don't have my hook disgorger with me, so I'm using my finger. Uh, there we go. And here's a trout. His trout mouth and his trout teeth. Really lovely fish. These things are just absolutely gorgeous. The thing about trout that I like the most, especially these uh, silver trout, is that when you look at them in different angles of the light, you can see different colors. They look silver at first, and then you'll notice the back is green, but then, oh no wait, you turn it and he's purple. Just absolutely beautiful. Reminds me a lot of a tarpon, just in color, really. I think tarpon are kind of similar in the fact that you start getting different angles on them, you can start seeing the light reflect off in different colors. Really, really beautiful fish. Absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Oh, God. These whiting are absolutely everywhere. Which is kind of interesting, you know, a lot of the times you come out when it's really cold outside, you just struggle to catch, oh, struggle to catch anything at all. And as I'm talking, the other rod that actually has a piece of fish on it just buckled over. I'll watch it real carefully now. Anyway, point of, yep, that's bigger fish. The point of all of that The point of all of that is to say that some days you have really good fishing days, just seemingly out of the blue. I'm waiting to make sure there's a fish on. Ah, I think I might have missed him. Don't feel anything. Yeah, I missed him. Oh well, bait's still intact. Let's get it back out. There we go. Just about 50 yards out. I oh, finally got another species on. A little perch. Or piggy perch as they're known. It's a type of grunter. Make little grinding sounds in the back of their teeth. It seems like every single time I want to show you guys a fish, that rod starts bouncing around. You hear that? That's the teeth in the back of his throat. They use them for grinding up crustaceans, shellfish, and vertebrates. Oh, that was a bigger fish. That was a bigger fish, that one. Now, I re- uh, I reset the way I was hooking through the bait, so I reeled in and I baited back up and instead of just nicking it through the, the end of a slice of fish, what I ended up, man, every single time, it's almost like it's a crab. What I ended up doing instead is running it through twice, so once through the top and then back to the bottom so that no matter where that fish bit on the bait, if I struck right, the hook potentially would be in its mouth. Every single time, this if the rod buckles over, I try to set the hook, and there's nothing there. Very strange. See, there's a fish on right now. Something is hitting this bait. But every time I try to set the hook, it's just gone. Okay, there he is. He's there. I'm, gonna, I'm watching that slack. Now he's on. I think, yeah, yeah, there he is, there he is. Yeah, that's what I thought, it's a little trout. Yeah, to knock the camera over. I met this uh, old, older gentleman in uh, Bolivar once, I was fishing a rollover pass, and he was out there and he told me, he said when he fishes for trout or any other smaller species like this, he doesn't actually feel the line, which is what I generally do. I put my finger on the line and I wait to feel it. He said he uses a very small lead. He actually said he preferred to use just the jig head with the hook cut off as the lead. And then you have the hook tied on the line a little bit closer up like drop shot style. Beautiful. And he said what he'd do is he'd cast out and he'd let there just be a bow in the line. And he wouldn't even wait to feel the fish. As soon as he saw that bow in the line start to straighten out, he'd set the hook. Which is what I just did and it does work. 
beautiful fish. Turning into one of those really good days. No time to waste. Let's get it back out. I'm gonna start fishing with uh, cut bait on both of these rods now. Try to see how many of these trout we can get. There we go. And on the bottom. I'm willing to bet you by the time I even start messing with my second rod, this one will probably have a fish on it. They really seem to be really biting hard right now. All right, put that one there. Double check the bait set up on this rod. Tangle that. There we go. Get this out. Oh, yep, there's a fish. Dang, I don't even have time to get the other line in the water. Okay, put that right there. Bait runner's on. Let's get this rod. Make sure he's on. Yeah, there he is. Okay, missed that one. Bait's still on though. Get back out. Actually not gonna set it up straight. Put it right here next to me. Just watch the tip. Do the same thing with this one. This one is a little bit easier because it's got a bait running feature. This one already got a fish on. Good grief. It's actually making it difficult to fish with two rods. Get away from the I'm going to set one aside. I'm just going to focus on using a single rod right now. Because this back and forth is probably what's causing me to lose these fish. Wasn't ready for that. There you go. You saw that I was reaching back to cut, cut camera. We got another trout. We just caught fish of the day so far. Kind of a throwaway cast. I was actually just attempting to get the line out of the way. So I was gonna try to pull out some lures, maybe use some flies and try to catch some small fish. So I just thought, all right, just get these rods out of the way, cast it off to the side where it won't get in the way of my back cast. Ended up with this really nice trout. This one is really, really lovely. Beautiful colors on that, just fantastic fish. I mean, he's not a monster, but it's the biggest fish of the day so far, really, really nice. Just came out of nowhere. You can see those teeth right there, perfectly designed for catching small fish. Absolutely fantastic. Pleased to have that. So these fish, 
So these traps seem to be hanging out right at the base of that tower. That's where we're gonna put this bait. Sitting nicely right next to the base of that tower. See how long it takes before we get something biting. Okay, something already. Something is already interested. Just not convinced it's uh not convinced it's a fish worth striking for quite yet. Okay, he's on, he's on. Let's see what we got. Ooh, that's a big croaker. Really big croaker. Wasn't expecting that, especially on a piece of whiting, but you know, fish are opportunistic, especially, oof, especially saltwater fish, because it's a much harsher environment than freshwater. You gotta get what you can get while you can get it. I'll toss this guy back. Bait's still good, so throw it back in. Tell you what, I have never been more in need of a pair of polarizing sunglasses than right now. And the sun is just absolutely glaring. There we go. Right, right in front of it. All the fish that are taking refuge next to that huge piece of structure just have this piece of food fall down right in front of them. Put this down for a second. I just wedge it into these rocks here. There you go. Just leave that as it is. I have a few shots with a lure while we're waiting. Right here. This is what I've got, just a soft plastic and a heavily weighted weedless hook. Really good for fishing in these rocks. You don't get snagged up so much. I'm gonna throw it in the same general area. I'm gonna let it sink. A lot of these fish seem to be feeding near the bottom. And trout are, you know, when they mature, they're almost entirely piscivorous, meaning they eat exclusively other fish. They'll eat shrimp when they're younger. And when they're older, they, they will be opportunistic and take live shrimp. But primarily, as trout grow, their diet uh, becomes composed more and more of just fish. Oh yeah, okay, something's hitting the rod down there. Let's go ahead and get this lure in. Put that right there for a second. I never pick up and strike right away unless I know the fish is still on. I always like to feel. A lot of these fish, these saltwater fish will just pick at a bait. There we go, got a nice fresh piece of fish on there, a little bit bigger. Try to keep those smaller whiting and croaker away from it. Throw it right back to the center of that, that pole. A little too close. I don't know if you heard that. I actually hit it. A little clang of the lead. But that bait is sitting in there. Right, right up on it. Already fish, already fish picking at it. Ah, I want a fish to commit fish to really commit to it though. <laughs> These croaker are huge. Huge opportunistic feeders. Just going after entire fillets of whiting. Absolutely crazy. I mean it's not the first time I've seen this but it's, it is kind of rare. Look at this. Look at the size of the bait that fish took. It's almost as big as his whole head. It's absolutely incredible. 
got it down that telescopic mouth right there. It's just sucked it down. Pretty cool. Back. Not interested. I don't need him for bait. You got plenty of bait now with that whiting. I also, and this is just my personal preference, my personal opinion, I think whiting is a better bait than croaker. You don't ever see whiting in bait shops. You know, you go to a bait shop, you pay eight dollars for a dozen live croaker, and you don't have any whiting. I think whiting's a better bait. Ah, well here's something you've never seen before. Me putting fish on a stringer. Pretty good day. These are all silver sea trout. Let me get these home. Actually see if we can't make some uh, some dinner out of this. So turn this into a bit of a catch and a cook. But first, we gotta pack up. We gotta keep these things cold. We gotta make sure we get them cleaned out. Let's get moving on. All right, let's get the fish ready. All right, now a really good start to any recipe is not doing what the recipe says. So I don't have any parchment paper. Uh, that's what the recipe calls for that I'm following. I am gonna be using a baking tray with a little bit of olive oil, not too much, but no parchment paper. I'm very much of the uh, Jamie Oliver school of thought. I do not like to measure things out. I just like to estimate, get a feel for it. Jamie and I are kind of on the same level as chefs, so, you know. All right, now I have been defrosting the fish. Unfortunately, I didn't get to cook them right away, so they've been sitting in the freezer, which really, if you're picky or you have good taste, that's not what you want to do when you have fish. The fresher you cook them, the better they're going to be. But they have thawed out nicely, so this is, this is what we've got. We've got the whole trout, skin on, and that is the only way to eat trout. Skin on, body cavity cleaned out, and uh, you'll notice I cut the heads off of these things. We're gonna be baking them in this tray. We're gonna have baked fish. Normally, with baked fish, especially trout, I think it's probably better to have the head on. That's what most recipes call for. I cut the heads off because I wanna use them later for bait to catch more fish. So, heads off, tails off. Hopefully these will cook up quite nicely. I do wanna thank our two uh, sponsor groups for this video today, the Guy Am Company and Ernest Hemingway both contributed to the filming of this video. Um, by that I mean our camera stand today is a foam roller box from the Guyan Company and that is being weighed down by On Hunting and Fishing by Ernest Hemingway. Again, as I say with a lot of things, by no means am I an expert. We're just gonna do our best today and see if it works. Now, for seasoning, we have got garlic, rosemary, and salt. Get some oil on these fish, just a little bit. Just kinda, gotta get messy when you're cooking. They were slippery when we caught them. We're gonna make them slippery while we cook them. Just rub that oil on there. There we go. I know some of you guys out there who are expert chefs are looking at this and you're thinking, he doesn't know what he's doing. It's probably true. So what I'm going to do, again, my measurements are all in here, or here. I'm just going to sprinkle some of the salt around these fish, like so. Maybe it's too much? I don't know. It's an experiment. This is a catch and cook, not a catch and how to cook. Big difference. All right, got some salt on there down a little bit, get you a closer view. It's always safe practices too, to break your posture and try to look into a camera when you're using a very sharp knife. Get some garlic here. There we go, that is probably well more than enough. Just finally rinse this. Mm, that was a little too close. Die, 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 die. <clears throat> Ever there was a staple item to cook with your fish, it is the lemon. Now I have read that back in the day, the reason they started serving lemon slices with fish is because it was not uncommon to choke on the bone. I don't know if that's just people ate fast back in the day or they were stupid, I don't know. But anyway, people used to choke on fish bones quite often apparently. And lemon, somehow, I don't know the science behind this or if there is in fact science behind it, but from what I've read, lemon was believed to help you um, 
not choke on the fishbone. It either helped it get down your throat better or something to that effect. But lemon was originally, if I'm not mistaken, served with fish to help the bones keep from being stuck in your throat. Hopefully, we won't get to that point. But I think that is where the connection between fish and lemon being so strong originally comes from. Correct me if I'm wrong, but look that up and see if I'm right. A little bit of onion here. Slice the end off. Boom. Slice the other end off. And just put a very shallow slice across. And then this part should peel all the way off in one foul swoop. Ah, oh, I broke it. Oh, no, wait, I didn't. <laughs> there we go. Mona Lisa, you're an overrated piece of shit. A trick I've been taught in the past, and this has always worked for me, is that if you're chopping up an onion, hold water in your mouth, like a lot of it, so you kind of have the chipmunk effect going on, like so. And it tends to help the onion from causing your eyes... Let me demonstrate. It helps uh, keep the uh, onion from causing your eyes to burn. Again, I don't know why that is, but I know from personal experience that has always worked. All right, so here's the plan. I'm gonna take some of these onions, lay them out as a base in our baking dish thing here. And then I'm gonna take the fishes and I'm going to take the onions and haphazardly cut them while they're still in my hand because safety first. Oh God, my eyes. Oh God. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put some of the onions in. Actually, I should put the fish this way so they don't crowd each other in here. I'm gonna slide some of these onions, some of these smaller pieces of these onions in the body cavity of the trout, like so. Okay, my lemon slices. Kind of lay one across the top of each little fish here. And then my minced garlic, which I have, there we go. I'm gonna scrape this up with Mr knife here and just kind of sprinkle this on there we go all right there it is let's see if it will cook as good as i'm hoping it will here we go let's get it in now the recipe called for about 10 minutes on each side oven preheated to 450. it is preheated to 450 has been for some time. I've been nervously glancing over at the fire alarm throughout this video. Time to wait 10 minutes. 10 minutes. None of these are 10 minutes. I can't order any of this stuff. Dang it! Run from it, hide from it, destiny rides. All right, all right, all right. Let's see how things have gone. Looking fine, all right. Ooh, that look good. All right, now what we should be able to do is take this fork right here and just kind of flake down the side of the fish, or stroke down the side of the fish, rather, and the meat should just flake away. It should be white in color. Now, I can smell everything. I can smell the fish. I can smell the onions. I can smell that lemon. I can smell the spices we put on it, which is all good signs. Now, let's see how it comes away. Perfect. It doesn't have to be beautiful once you tear it apart. It just has to be cooked through, and it has to taste good. Oh, that... That is a beautiful piece of fish, guys. Look at the steam coming off of that. Really hot. <sighs> smells really good. I wish you had smell of vision I'm not a great chef, but I will not lie. This smells like it came out of a nice restaurant. And it tastes like it too. That is delicious. Yeah, guys, that looks just beautiful. That turned out better than I had hoped. Now you could pair this with a lot of things. Obviously you could put rice under it. You could cook or uh, some nice steamed vegetables to go with it. 
Um, you know, a lot of people prefer wine with their fish, but I don't drink, so that's an out for me. Just plain water or tea, thank you. But as far as a catch and cook goes for somebody who doesn't normally cook fish, I think this was a success. I could just sit here and eat every last bite of this. Really lovely. Now, a lot of people shy away from the skin on fish. I think that is a waste, not only of the nutrients of the fish, because skin is packed full of nutrients, but just taste. Skin, when cooked properly, is amazing. A really good way to cook skin that I probably will do in the near future, maybe try to make a video on it, is uh, you can bake it like so, or uh, peel it off before you cook the fish, and then cook it on a grill, and actually flame grill the skin, it turns it really crispy, it has a nice little kind of like a chip texture to it. It's still packed full of that fish flavor and those oils. That is delicious. Let me try some of these onions. You know, food is interesting. Um, typically speaking, I don't like eating alone. I prefer to eat with other people. Food to me is more important for you know the company that it, that it brings to you or brings you to. However. There is just something about, and you guys will agree with me on this, there is something about the ability to catch your own food and then be able to cook your own food. Just the feeling of independence and accomplishment that comes with that is really something special. Now, if I went out and caught these fish, and by the way, typically when I fish, it is to see a species of animal that I admire very much that I otherwise don't generally get to see. That's why I fish, actually. Um, but catching fish and then cooking them would give me the sense of accomplishment on one half, even if it didn't taste good. But the fact that I can actually follow a recipe and make something that not only tastes decent, but in my personal opinion, and you're gonna have to take my word for it because you're not here, this actually tastes really good. That is in its own, in its own way, like another sense of accomplishment that just feels fantastic. Uh, cooking is so much fun and being good at it, passable at it, getting better at it, is something that I take a lot of pride in. So, try it out. I mean, not expensive. Not expensive at all. You just need a little bit of time, dedication, fish, onions, and you're set. Now I'm just gonna leave the camera rolling while I eat every last bit of this. There are entire YouTube channels that are just this. And I hate them. I hate them all. That is so good. Oh. <sighs>